Hey y'all, and welcome to Flick Connection, where in less time than you normally spend scrolling for something to watch every night, I'm gonna tell you about 20 excellent movies you can catch for free on Tubi. But don't worry if you've never used Tubi, it's completely free. You don't even have to sign up for an account to start watching all of these movies right away. But beyond that, I've also listed other streaming services that are currently hosting all of these movies down in the top pinned comment to give you plenty of options. But my number 20 pick is a banger of a hidden gem starring Kevin Bacon. It's titled Cop Car. In this movie, a couple of fairly young delinquent kids steal a police car that's abandoned out on the road, hoping to take it for a joyride, but boy did they steal from the wrong police officer. Now obviously these boys would be in deep trouble no matter what, but Kevin Bacon is playing a real sinister fella in this movie and he does a killer job. And it's a very different role for Kevin Bacon. It's not like it's the only bad guy he's ever played, but man, it's kind of a toothy character and he does a great job with it. The movie itself has a fairly small scale, but if you tend to like indie crime thrillers, especially a lot of the ones I recommend here on the channel, Cop Car is a great one, especially for my number 20 pick. Elijah Wood stars in my next one that is not only hardcore at times, but it's also really weird, yet manages to work surprisingly well, Come to Daddy. And trust me, the movie itself is weirder than the title. In this movie, he actually plays an estranged son trying to reconnect with his long lost father in this quaint little beach house. And the first half of the movie is really just a performance piece. It comes across almost like a stage play. And then in the middle of the movie, there's kind of a big surprise and the tone of the movie completely changes. I will warn you, it can be graphic at times, but if you tend to like more graphic movies, like the ones we're talking about here on this list, Come to Daddy is a cool one. Just don't expect this movie to go in any directions that you might expect. Now, even though I tend to recommend a lot of lesser known movies on the channel, this particular list does have some familiar favorites, my next pick being Constantine. Now this is a surprisingly rewatchable movie. It's not one that I love, you can tell by its low placement on the list, but I've watched it a bunch of times and enjoy it every time. There's a bunch of great sequences in this, amazing visuals, and Keanu Reeves is just kind of always great, but you've also got a really great little role from Shia LaBeouf, Rachel Weisz is great in this. Tilda Swinton has a really fantastic role. Peter Stormare as the devil is one of my favorite little roles that he did. And then Gavin Rossdale from Bush is actually really fantastic in this movie. I was surprised I didn't see him in more movies after this. Just an all around cool flick that ends up being a lot better than the sum of its parts. Now we've got an Oscar winner way back on the list at number 17, but that's just because of how strong this list is. I've actually put The Hurt Locker at number 17, and while I highly recommend this movie and do love it, uh, I'm not sure it really deserved Best Picture the year that it came out, yet it's still a fantastic movie. It's easily one of Jeremy Renner's best. I mean, he's in some fun movies, but this is one of his greatest roles. Anthony Mackie's fantastic in this. And Catherine Bigelow is famous for directing some macho movies. I mean, she did Point Break, and The Hurt Locker kind of fits in a similar wheelhouse, even though it's a lot more grounded than some of her other action movies. Now, my next pick developed into sort of a cult classic, but when you think of classic Bruce Willis movies, I'm not sure The Jackal comes to mind first. This is a thriller from 1997 where Bruce Willis actually plays a vicious assassin called The Jackal. Richard Gere is hunting him down and it's a 90s thriller. It feels somewhat dated, but there are some great moments in this one that have held up with time, particularly the one with Jack Black. He's in multiple scenes, but if you've seen The Jackal, there's one scene in particular with a fairly young Jack Black that is still kind of amazing to watch today. I wouldn't label this to be nearly as rewatchable as Constantine, but if you've just seen it the one time, or maybe it's been a while, The Jackal is well worth revisiting. Speaking of revisiting, Denzel Washington stars in my next pick on this list, which was also one of the last movies directed by legendary director Tony Scott, Deja Vu. 
Now I'd struggle to label this an action movie, it is much more of a sci-fi thriller, but there are several amazing action sequences in it, and that's because Tony Scott had this incredible frenetic style that he developed later in his career. In fact, his movies just became more and more fast paced, and Deja Vu is a great example of the style he developed later in his career. In fact, had he not directed this, I think it would have been a fairly forgettable movie. Don't get me wrong, it's interesting. I would have enjoyed it, the setup, the script, everything is pretty exceptional, but the Tony Scott flair is just kind of unmatched, making this a dazzling watch, much more so than it would have been otherwise. And Deja Vu gets points for essentially being a time travel based sci-fi flick that does things very differently than any other time travel story I've seen and implements it all fairly well as well. For anyone eyeing this St. Nicholas shirt, it is only available at DarrenVanDam.com. I'll put a link in the description, but it's pretty easy to find. I've got a bunch of new designs over there. My wife and I teamed up on these to create some really stellar designs. There's a bunch over at the site right now, and we went through a lot of different shirts to make sure we got the perfect 100% cotton, super soft shirts. I know as someone who wears almost exclusively t-shirts, it Cotton shirts can be rough sometimes. We got the soft ones, they're incredible. So go check out the designs. They're all reasonably priced and some of these, like the St. Nicholas shirt, are gonna be limited edition. So you won't be able to catch this one in particular much longer. But not only do you get a cool shirt out of it, but it's a great way to help support the show so we can keep producing future episodes. But Speaking of the show, let's get back to it with my top 14 picks on Tubi. Next up is one of the best horror sequels I think I've ever seen, Stephen King's Doctor Sleep. This is the long-awaited sequel to The Shining, or rather, it's based on the book that Stephen King followed The Shining up with, and my understanding is that it skips over a lot of stuff in the book, but as a movie nerd and big fan of Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, I thought that this movie was an amazing follow-up. Now, I would not put it on the same level as The Shining, but it did a great job of respecting the original film in a lot of different ways. Not just by making this movie good, by the way. Rebecca Ferguson in this movie is just absolutely dynamite. She really elevated this movie for me. And it's got a lot of cool elements, it's got a good look to it. But whenever you're back at the hotel, the way all of that stuff was shot is really fantastic. There's a keen eye for detail in a lot of those scenes. And I thought it was kind of an amazing way to revisit the hotel from The Shining in a movie that again really respected Stanley Kubrick's work and Stephen King's for that matter. Next up, we've got a Tom Cruise action sci-fi movie that's not quite underrated, but man, is this a pretty movie, Oblivion. 60 years ago, Earth was attacked. We won the war, but they destroyed half the planet. In fact, I'll take that back. I agree. I think Oblivion is somewhat underrated. It was kind of a hit when it came out and has been somewhat discarded, but this too is a rewatchable movie. The story has plenty of twists and turns to keep you engaged, even if you have seen it. And the visual style is well worth re-watching. I mean, some of the shots they created, I know a lot of it is computer animated, but it still looks absolutely breathtaking. And then you get some pretty killer action, especially for a PG-13 sci-fi movie. This movie goes to some places I didn't expect and ultimately ends up being a solid sci-fi flick. In fact, the bar is just so high for Tom Cruise movies. If someone much less famous had starred in this, this probably would have been a total surprise hit of a movie. But speaking of surprise hits, I've got a comedy next up on the list, but in keeping with the theme of the list, it is a bone-breaking comedy. Goon. No, you're not joining the Oscapades, right, buddy? You're not trying for the... the what? Now, this is easily one of the funniest movies about hockey ever made, maybe second to Slapshot. And Stifler, I mean, Sean William Scott, is amazing in this movie. He plays this really offbeat character and does a fantastic job. The whole cast is great. His rival is played by Liev Shriver. 
who does not get a lot of credit for being a solid comedic actor, but he really is. He's fantastic. I know he plays serious roles mostly, but he's hilarious and this the whole cast is. It's well written and it's kind of heartwarming too. It's not just a silly movie like a Will Ferrell movie might be. It actually ends up being a pretty decent sports movie as well, making this one highly rewatchable. And if you watch it and love it, there's a sequel titled Goon, Last of the Enforcers. It is currently included on Netflix here in the US. One of my favorite directors of all time, Michael Mann, has a brand new movie coming out over Christmas titled Ferrari. It's his first movie in years. I'm excited to see it. But one of my favorite crime movies of his is also on Tubi, Miami Vice. Michael Mann is famous for creating the show Miami Vice in the 80s and then about 20 years later created this movie. And while it's not one of his best, I personally really like it. In other words, it's flawed in a lot of ways, particularly in pacing. It can kind of drag in the middle for a little too long. But still, the visual style of this was mostly, if not exclusively, done with digital cameras, and it was one of the first big budget Hollywood movies to do so. And as a result, it has a very unique look to it. If you watch this on a high def big screen, it really does look amazing. The soundtrack, I think, is exceptional. And then it just ends up being kind of a slick, cool Miami crime movie, even if it doesn't feel exactly like the original series. Next up, we've got another Oscar-winning movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio in my number 10 spot with Blood Diamond. This movie, I think, has turned into kind of an underrated one. It's pretty exceptional, mainly because it's just a fantastic story, but it, too, has quite a bit of action packed into it. My only real complaint with this one is it's maybe a bit over long, but my goodness, I can say that about a lot of movies, particularly ones DiCaprio has starred in. But not only is he great, you've got Jennifer Connelly doing really a, a fantastic role in this as well. I mean, she's always good. And I think this is the first major starring role for Jaiman Hansu, who also had a great scene in Constantine, by the way. Now my number nine pick will seem silly to a lot of you to have it ranked higher than some of the other movies on this list, but it gets huge points from me for just being a wild ride that never forgets to be fun. I'm talking about Robert Rodriguez's conclusion to the El Mariachi trilogy, Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Now again, this movie gets points just for being solid entertainment. It never forgets to be entertaining. I mean, honestly, the movie doesn't go more than 30 seconds without someone saying something incredibly interesting or funny, without showing you something interesting or dazzling or without surprising you with something out of left field. To me, this is just top-notch entertainment and it's packed with so many elements that I love. You know, action, sex, violence, weird stuff is in here as well. And not to mention, a stacked cast. I mean, we're talking Antonio Banderas, Selma Hayek, Johnny Depp, Willem Dafoe, Mickey Rourke, Ava Mendez, Danny Trejo, Cheech Marin. I mean, I can't get everybody. It's, it's absolutely packed. And again, one of the most fun movies you could possibly watch on Tubi right now. Now, I did say these were hardcore movies. I mean, they're packed with action and just some bone-breaking stuff, but nothing even comes close to my next pick. Brawl and Cell Block 99. I'm not going to tell you anything you want to hear. And prison will give me plenty of time to look at guys I don't like. This is one I have loved recommending for years on the platform now. It's from the same director as Bone Tomahawk and Dragged Across Concrete. And while I love both of those movies, Brawl and Cell Block 99 is my jam. Now, I will say it's fairly slow paced for the first half. You do kind of have to be into this badass character that Vince Vaughn is playing, and he is doing a great job. It's really surprising to see him do a role like this. Now, he did do some more serious roles when he was younger, but not only has it been a while, Brawl and Cell Block 99 actually blends this amazing sort of quiet, stoic character that he does with kind of a zany premise, making him just an amazing casting choice for this role. And then you get to the midway point of the movie, and trust me, I've timed it. It's almost the midway point to the minute. Something snaps, and the tone of the movie completely changes in a major way, and I love it for it. It's not realistic by any accounts, but just like Once Upon a Time in Mexico, it's thoroughly entertaining from beginning to end. But fair warning, folks, this is a brutal one. 
In terms of modern warfare movies, there have been some great ones over the years. Lone Survivor comes to mind. I really enjoyed 13 Hours, but still to this day, I think the greatest one ever put to film has gotta be Ridley Scott's Black Hawk Down. Now, not only is this an excellent film with a fantastic script and again, just an amazing cast, I'm not gonna start naming people in Black Hawk Down, but the thing that really elevates this more than anything else was the way that they filmed it. Now, they did not film this in Somalia, they actually filmed it in Morocco, but they're filming it on streets that look like the Somali streets. I mean, they're using real Blackhawks that are flying through tire smoke and it's all actually happening on screen. Everything except for like the bullets hitting the buildings, meaning there's not a lot of digital effects in the movie. There's some in almost every shot, but most of what is on screen is real. And the way the story plays out is mostly real to life. There's actually a documentary that follows it as well. And they moved some things around to make it work better as a movie, but they're actually representing most of what happened on the ground there with one or two little touches that make it a little more Hollywood, but they didn't go crazy with that. And I think that's why this is held up as such a solid flick for so long. My number six pick is not one movie. It's not two movies. It is the original John Wick trilogy, which is currently included with Tubi, at least it is here in the US. And I'm ranking these together kind of as one movie. Now, each one is different in their own right, yet the experience of watching all the John Wick movies is kind of like it's one solid thing. I love the first one. It was such a surprise and I think did such a great job setting up the story for an action movie. You don't need a ton of story in a movie like this, but you need a solid one to serve as a foundation. And the way they did everything with the dog is just, I think, brilliant. And it's quick and to the point and lets you enjoy the action without it being mind numbing. However, as the series progressed, it did turn into mind numbing action, but only because it goes on for so long. By the time you get to the John Wick 3, the action sequences are almost exhausting. And then by the time you get to the fourth one, which is currently available, but not on Tubi, it is literally exhausting. Like I, my wife, she loves the movies, really almost couldn't stand the fourth one, mainly because the action sequences just do not quit. And that's what these movies are. They are stunt showcases. They're packed with stunt men doing heavily rehearsed stunt work yet it all looks fantastic. If you're not into action movies and maybe you're with someone that is, try looking at these almost as like a Cirque du Soleil type of a performance. That's kind of what they are. When you look at them like that, you, you may see more than just mind numbing violence. Next up, we've got a fantastic example of a crime movie that just gets better and better with subsequent watches, Training Day. Good. I remember back when this came out, there was some talk as to Denzel Washington winning for best actor and you know some of the snobbier people in Hollywood thinking that this wasn't his best work. And maybe it's not, but my God, does he kill it in this movie. He is just amazing from top to bottom. Plays this master manipulator character in such an amazing way that you can re-watch it. Uh, countless times I've seen this movie and his character is still able to kind of lull you into this false sense of security. It's really amazing what he pulled off in this movie. And then Ethan Hawke is fantastic. I mean, he's not outshining Denzel Washington, but he's not supposed to. But his performance goes from being very, very subtle to this kind of wild, screamy, over-the-top thing, making this just a real killer flick. I mean, the performance work is incredible, but also just, it's got this solid look to it. It still looks like it was filmed recently, even though the movie's over 20 years old now. I've recently got the itch to rewatch my next pick. It's a long time 80s action movie classic, but I've got the itch because they just recently released a new video game based on Robocop. Now this is a satire that has held up surprisingly well, mainly because a lot of the themes it deals with are still things we're dealing with today. Maybe more so today than we were back when this movie came out. They tried remaking it, they failed, they completely kind of missed the point. 
but it didn't need to be remade in my opinion because the original is a product of the 80s and when you remove it from that, uh, it's, just, it's not going to be even close to the same thing that's part of its magic. But if you've somehow never seen RoboCop, or maybe you saw it years ago and feel like you don't need to revisit it, I can tell you, the way that it's written, it makes for a solid, solid satire. Now, it is violent and over the top. There's a reason it's on this list of hardcore movies. But even if that's not your thing, there's still a lot to love with RoboCop, and it all comes out of this kind of amazing dystopian 1980s corporate ruled world that they built. It feels a little bit too real, and again, that's kind of why it still holds up so well today. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. And yes, this is a list where RoboCop is ranked right behind Martin Scorsese's The Departed. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, thank you. Now there was a period when this movie first came out where I thought this was going to be like my favorite movie of all time. It's certainly one of them, and it's because I do think it's one of the best composed movies I've ever seen. In my opinion, Scorsese, even though he is easily my favorite director, his movies have gotten just really kind of long-winded, and when you go back and watch movies like The Departed and stuff he did earlier, the movies are long, they're over two hours, but they just bang along and move at this incredible clip, give you so much information, and just bang, 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 keep moving. His last couple of movies don't do that. Now, you may be partial to that slower pace, but my goodness, does The Departed move. Not to mention, top tier performances from killer actors like Jack Nicholson, Matt Damon, DiCaprio again obviously, but also the supporting cast, Ray Winston. It's one of my favorite Alec Baldwin roles of all time, one of my favorite Mark Wahlberg roles of all time. I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. And the movie itself is just stacked with great moments, and even the scenes that do feel a bit slow, that drag, they're loaded with incredible performances from, again, just <laughs> people like Jack Nicholson. So another one that's just highly, highly rewatchable. It's, it's one that I would probably never get tired of. And then Quentin Tarantino makes the list with two of his more hardcore movies, which is something to say, Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. Personally, I'm more partial to Volume 1, but I can totally see why other people would be partial to Volume 2. Everything in Volume 1 hits for me, and you gotta remember, this came out after he had done Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and Jackie Brown. Movies that have plenty of Quentin Tarantino style, but Kill Bill is a very different genre, and then ends up being this beautiful, glossy, insanely, like, colorfully saturated movie that just does not feel like anything else he had done, and my God, did he knock it out of the park. He would go on to continue with sort of this colorful, vibrant style with a lot of his movies. And my goodness, Kill Bill, I think today is still one of his most visually stunning projects, particularly, again, volume one. Not only does it start off in an incredible way, you've got this amazing little anime segment in the middle. And then the scene with the Crazy 88 at the end is just one of the wildest scenes ever put to film. I still remember seeing it in a crowded theater the night it came out. And it's one of my most memorable theater experiences of all time, which is why it gets placed here on the list. And then you gotta say, well, geez, what could top that? Especially something that's free on Tubi and it's my favorite movie of all time. Longtime subscribers already know I'm getting ready to go on a rant about Goodfellas. He used a razor and he used to slice it so thin that it used to liquefy in the pan with just a little oil. Now, I do not talk about this movie much on the channel, so give me a minute to gush. But I'll say all the same stuff I said about The Departed because they're very, very similar movies. Goodfellas is not just another gangster movie, but it's so well composed by Scorsese. You've got three different acts, the movie just bangs along at a real steady clip. Even the slower parts that don't have a lot of things happening in them feature just incredible performances from a top-notch cast. You know, Ray Liotta went on to have an amazing career, but there's nothing like his performance in Goodfellas. And, and for that matter, Scorsese has directed some amazing movies since then. Movies like Casino and The Departed, which both come very close to Goodfellas, but are still not as pitch perfect of a movie as Goodfellas is. It's really unbelievable. 
I absolutely love every stitch of this flick. If it's been a while since you've seen it, do yourself a favor and check it out. And don't forget to go check out DarrenVanDam.com to see if there's any cool shirts over there that you might like. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out the special Tubi episode, and you will see me on the next one.